So this is a continuation of session one. So here we'll be discussing the history of wireless communications. So, so if we see actually wireless communication started from ancient time onwards, people were using light and smoke for communications. So they use uh, these as some signals, mainly to, uh, to, to represent to other person that there is some danger or somebody is coming to attack or for transmitting some limited information like code signals, like different type of light may, re may represent some, some kind of information. And lights and flags were also extensively used in the older days for by Navy, by the people who used to uh, travel through, through sea and ocean. So in today's world also, uh, a sailor should know uh, some flag symbols uh, because if all the wireless communication, if all the technology fails, uh, then his only means of communication is through, uh, through flags. So, so, so the sailor should be aware of some minimum uh, flag signals. And the first technical means of wireless communication for long distance was introduced by Claude Che in 1794. And by introducing a device called, uh, by introducing the concept called optical telegraph. So, so basically it is a telegraph which transmits information from, uh, for long, over a long distance using lights. So that is called as optical telegraph. The first commercial telegraph line uh, was laid between Washington and Baltimore in the year 1843. And in 1876, a telephone was introduced by Graham Bell and also it was marketed. But before that also um, other scientists from other part of the world has actually coined the idea of telephone, but it was not successfully marketed. And in 1881, public telephone service uh, began at Berlin. In 1936, public voice and video service uh, was done between Berlin and Leipzig. Uh, the problem with the optical transmission is uh, it, it get disturbed with even a small obstacle. So even if there is a small obstacle, the optical communication uh, get disturbed uh, a lot and the message may get tampered. So, so that was the problem with uh, optical communication. So, uh, but, uh, but that problem was uh, solved with the advent of uh, electromagnetic communication. So, so at first in 1831, the concept of electromagnetic induction was introduced by Michael Faraday. And then in 1864, the theoretical foundations of electromagnetic fields uh, were, uh, were proved by James C. Maxwell through his famous uh, Maxwell equation. And in 1886, the wave character of electro, uh, electrical transmission through space was demonstrated by and rich heads so that uh, today also uh, the wave is uh, the frequency of wave is measured in terms of heads and Nikola Tesla contributed in increasing the distance of the electromagnetic transmission so basically his contribution is like uh, transmitting electromagnetic waves over a long long distance communication and wireless telegraphy for long wave transmission was introduced by Marconi in 1895. The first commercial radio station was started uh, from Petersburg in 1920. And vacuum tubes were introduced in 1906, which reduced the size of the sender and the receiver. Before that, 
the wireless transmitter and receiver would be of uh, big sizes. So with the advent of vacuum tubes, uh, the size of the sender and receiver had reduced uh, to a larger extent. And first telephone in train uh, was introduced in 1926 uh, between Berlin and Hamburg line. And George Frost, uh, he's an 18 year old boy. He integrated radio into Ford car in 1922. And then uh, the intro and then integrating radio to the car was commercialized in 1927. In 1928, John L. Bird uh, transmitted analog television across Atlantic Ocean. That is, he transmitted TV from uh, television from one country to another country. So since then, since 1928, all wireless communication, it used amplitude modulation. Uh, but the problem with amplitude modulation is it uh, it provides poor quality and also it creates interference it provides poor quality and also it creates some interference the concept of frequency modulation was introduced in the year 1933 uh, by edwin h armstrong so after that radio communication uh, was available in two frequencies in, in amplitude frequency and also in, uh, in amplitude modulation techniques and also using frequency modulation technique. So generally frequency modulation uh, provides better uh, performance than amplitude modulation. In Germany in 1958, a network called ANETS was introduced uh, for mobile communication. And this network uh, uh, provides a carrier frequency of 160 megahertz. And here the connection setup should be initiated from the mobile station. That is there will be mobile station and also there will be the base stations. But the connection setup should be initiated only from the mobile station. And it won't support and, and, and it doesn't support the concept of handover. That is the mobile station is always connected with one base station. If the base, if there is any problem with that base station, uh, this mobile station cannot switch over to some other base station. In 1971, uh, the coverage uh, provided by ANETS was 80 percentage and it supported up to 11,000 customers. In 1972, uh, in Germany, an advanced network of ANETs, which is called as BNETs, was introduced, uh, which also operated at a carrier frequency of 160 megahertz. Uh, but where, where ANETs, the communication should be initiated from the uh, mobile end, whereas in BNETs, the communication can also be set up from the fixed network side. So it can be either set up from the mobile end or from the a fixed network end also. If the communication is initiated from the fixed network end, uh, then the fixed network uh, should know the location of the mobile receiver. By 1979, BNETs was having uh, around 13,000 customers. So during the same period, that is during 1970s, uh, so, so ANETs, BNETs, all these were introduced in Germany. So during the same period, during 1970s, in other North European countries, uh, they were following uh, a technology for, uh, for wireless communication. And that technology is called as Nordic mobile telephone, Nordic mobile telephone, and which is an analog based technology. It operated at a carrier frequency of 450 megahertz. So by early 1980s, uh, the, the European countries, the different parts of European countries, they followed, they used different mobile phone standards according to uh, the locality, whatever they, whatever the respective engineers or the 
uh, scientists developed so different uh, different areas in europe they started using different mobile phone standards and all these different standards were incompatible that is that is one standard uh, will not work with another standard okay so so what what europe thought in the sense what europe thought in the sense in 1982 uh, they proposed a pan europe uh, plan to standardize the mobile phones to standardize the mobile phones such a way that uh, the the user can travel across europe anywhere and it should be support uh, and, and it should be supporting roaming and this standard was uh, was proposed to work at a frequency of 900 megahertz and and it would be supporting both digital voice and data and in 1982 as a result of this uh, as a result of uh, integrating all incompatible mobile phone standards around europe and to and to provide a common standard uh, for europeans so that the any citizens of european can travel across europe and and they will be having the feature of roaming with digital voice and data so as a result of this plan uh, europe uh, proposed the concept called gsm uh, which is originally called as group special mobile so but but today gsm is called as global system for mobile communication so initially that is started uh, only for uh, only to group uh, different incompatible mobile phone standards within europe and to follow one common standard but later that concept was extended uh, throughout the world and so it was renamed as global system for mobile communication by the same time around by the same time in 1983 so in europe uh, they are uh, using like different uh, standards at different places and they integrated uh, uh, everything and they followed uh, and they for and they proposed a new standard which is called as group special mobile similarly in in, in us they are following one particular standard uh, which is called as uh, amps so amps stands for advanced mobile phone system advanced mobile phone system which is analog based system uh, which operates at 850 megahertz so and in 1884 uh, the home telephone of the US was mostly become cordless and that standard was called the CT1 cordless telephone standard and and around uh, 1984 uh, german has introduced the next next level of its mobile communication which is cnets which which operated at a frequency of 450 megahertz and it supports handover it supports handover so if we if you recollect a nets don't support handover whereas c nets supports handover and also it supports other add-on services like fax modem email x.25 x.25 is one network standard something like osa reference model but it is uh, it is it is uh, it was it was proposed uh, uh, well ahead of uh, the iso osa model so even it provides uh, some features which are not available in the standard ISA OSO model. So in 1991, uh, DECT, uh, so Digital European Cordless Telephone System uh, was introduced in 1981. 1991, sorry. And in, in 1991, so the DECT was operating at a frequency of 18, uh, 1880 to 1900 megahertz with a range of 100 to 500 meter range and it has 120 duplex channels that means uh, uh, 120 users can simultaneously communicate at a time and it supports a data rate of 1.2 megabits uh, per second and also it, it supports voice encryption authentication and and it allows it supports up to uh, several ten thousand users per square kilometer. By 1992, GSM uh, become fully digital. So GSM, which was uh, 
uh, originally proposed by Europe, Europe uh, to to uh, to group all its incompatible standards and to follow one common standard. So GSM by 1992 it became fully digital, and it operated at a frequency of 900 megahertz, and it had 124 channels, and 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 it has features like automatic location uh, detection, handover, roaming within Europe. And but now GSM uh, is is worldwide available in more than 200 uh, countries with a with a data rate of 9.6 kilobits per second. So it also supports other services like voice, fax, email. And in 1994, Germany introduced its next version of mobile phone systems, which is eNets. And, and it is a, uh, it operated at a, at a frequency of 1800 megahertz. And this is compatible with a GSM. And, and by 1997, eNets provides 98% coverage of the population in Germany. And in 1996, Hyperland, High Performance Radio Local Net, Local Area Network was, uh, was introduced and ETSI, it was introduced by ETSI, European Telecommunication Standards Institute and also wireless uh, ATM networks is, was, uh, was set up which can work at a speed of 155 megabits per second. And in 1997, the wireless LAN uh, concept was introduced, which is IEEE 802.11. So this is the today's Wi-Fi. So wi we are calling Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi standard name is IEEE 802.11. And it operates at the frequency of 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz. And also it supports infrared communication and it provides a data rate of 2 megabits per second. So, and, and uh, once the standard was introduced, uh, many, many products were started available on that, on this particular standard, that is IEEE 802.11 or Wi-Fi standard. In 1998, uh, many new uh, mobile-based uh, systems were introduced. The specification of GSM was was uh, was introduced, which is a successor of UMTS. UMTS uh, stands for Universal Mobile Telecommunication System. So, so European proposed uh, something called IMT uh, 2000. Okay, IMT stands for International Mobile Telecommunication. That is, in in 2000, Europe proposed an an, an idea that all the uh, by that time, different parts of the country were using different parts, uh, different countries of the world were using different mobile standards. And these mobile standards were not compatible with each other. So Europe proposed a plan to standardize all these things. And, and, and that standardization uh, is called as IMT 2000. IMT 2000. Uh, but, but, but later, uh, but later it was but later everything merged into GSM, Global System for Mobile Communication. And in 1998, uh, Iridium was also uh, introduced, uh, which is a mobile telephone satellite, uh, which, uh, which can communicate with 16 satellites, 66 satellites, and it operates at 1.6 gigahertz uh, frequency. So what is a mobile telephone satellite? So whatever the cellular phones which we are using, it communicates with the base station. And by communicating with the base station, it, it, it connects with this. Uh, whereas a mobile, whereas a, whereas a, whereas a satellite based uh, mobile system, what it does in the sense, it won't communicate with the, uh, with the base station, rather it will communicate with the satellite. By communicating with the satellite, it communicates with the other person, okay. so that uh, so so it can communicate actually throughout the world uh, without any uh, without any boundaries. And in 1999, the standardization of additional wireless lands like 
uh, an extension of IEEE 802.11, which is 802.11b was introduced, uh, which operates at a frequency of 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz, and it uh, and and it supports a data rate of 11 bits per second. And Bluetooths were introduced, uh, which is which is used to form a, a small ad hoc network, which is called as PicoNets, which supports uh, up to eight devices, and it operated at a speed of 2.4 gigahertz. It operated at the frequency of 2.4 gigahertz with a data transfer rate of less than one megabits per second. And the decision about IMT 2000 uh, was uh, was made. Uh, several uh, so as a part of IMT, uh, several IMT is international mobile telecommunication. That is, uh, several standards were were brought together and it was standardized. Like it includes UMTS, uh, Universal Mobile Telecommunication System, CDMA, uh, DECT, and 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 also in 1999, WAP was started. So WAP is wireless application protocol, uh, which is started at Japan. So they created a protocol called wireless application protocol uh, for mobile device communication. And also they introduced uh, something called iMoor, which is a mobile internet service, uh, which is popular in Japan. So actually uh, IMT 2000, it includes all these technologies. So they, if you see UMTS, uh, CDMA, CDMA stands for code, code division multiplexing, CDMA, DECT, WAP, iMode, all, all these follows different standards. So they are not uh, compatible with each other. So the job of the IMT is to uh, merge all these standards in such a way that uh, they will be compatible with each other. And, and, and that is the job of IMT 2000. Okay. And in 2000, GSM with uh, uh, higher data rates uh, were introduced. GSM with higher data rates were introduced. And the first GPRS uh, uh, trial, uh, trials with up to 50 kilobits per second data transmission was done. Uh, the GPRS stands for General Packet Radio Service. Uh, and and also it it, it supported uh, H, HS CSD. It is high speed circuit switched data at a speed of fifty seven thousand uh, at, at, at a speed of uh, fifty seven point six kilobits per second. So by two thousand one, the three G system was started. So CDMA 2000 was introduced in Korea. UMTS, Universal Mobile Telecommunication System was used in Europe. And Japan used a concept called FOMA, which means freedom of mobile, mobile multimedia access, uh, which is similar to WCDMA. The, the WCDMA concept uh, is, is called as uh, FOMA in, in, in Japan. And in 2002, wireless LAN hotspots uh, were, 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 were widely used by the public. And in 2003, UMTS was started in Germany. And, and Germany started replacing analog TV with uh, uh, digital TV, which is called as DVB, digital video broadcasting. And in 2005, WiMAX was introduced as an alternative to uh, DSL. It's not a mobile based technology, it is a wired technology. And first, SIGBI products were introduced. So, SIGBI also is used for uh, low range wireless communication, low range wireless communication with, with few devices. So, that SIGBI protocol is used. And in 2006, HSDPA, high speed downlink uh, packet access, was introduced in Germany. Fast UMTS. Uh, download version, uh, which 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 can download data at a rate of three megabits per second was was there, and also concepts like MIMO, uh, Wi-Fi were introduced in Germany. 
and in by 2007 over 3.3 billion subscribers sus subscribers were there for mobile phones so it is not 3 billion people it is 3.3 billion subscribers it means that uh, one person might have sub su subscribed for more than one device say for example now if you have your mobile phone and there are two sims in that in that uh, then that is counted as two subscription okay or if you are using or if you are watching television through uh, some form of internet connectivity uh, then then that is also will be counted as a subscription so it means each person may it is not that each person should have only one subscription each person can have more than one subscription also so mostly nowadays everybody will have more than one subscription so by 2008 uh, the internet the mobile phones were started supporting internet and mobile phones were introduced with browsers and with good data rates around 7.2 megabits per second and with a down and with a good download and and upload speed so hsdpa represents download speed high speed download packet access and hsupa represents upload speed high speed uh, uplink packet access so by 2008 uh, especially in germany uh the the download speed was 7.2 megabits per second and the upload speed was 1.4 megabits per second and more than uh, 100 mobile operators uh, were were, sub, uh, were were providing hspa service worldwide and and first uh, lte test was done in 2008 uh, lte stands for long time evolution for wireless communication with a data transmission rate of over 100 megabits per second in 2009 uh, the wireless communication started expanding uh, into netbooks iphone and 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 also it used vivo ip concepts in 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 all the devices voice over ip in 2010 lte that is long time evolution was available in some cities new frequencies were allocated Uh, the use of old analog tv bands okay, so some of the old analog tv uh, bands frequencies which were not used and that were allocated for wireless communication and and and, and lte was used as a replacement for uh, dsl so DL, dsl is digital subscriber line uh, which is used as a which is used to provide wired internet through uh, through telephone network so obviously telephone network speed is limited uh, so that that is that was replaced by lte uh, to provide faster internet service by 2015 uh, vivo lte was introduced vivo lte stands for voice over long term evolution and lte was operating at a frequency of 700 megahertz and lte uh, advanced as were also introduced so 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 basically lte represents all Uh, advanced mobile communication standards and by 2020 the 5g was started so this is the brief history about wireless communication starting from ancient time to till date so this is about session 1 so basically in session 1 we have discussed like how future computers will look like so the computers will become more and more portable it will become more wireless and it will become like an it will be an integrated unit that is embedded technology will play a crucial role but there may not be uh, different devices to plug in everything will be will be available as a single unit or a package and iot internet of things or internet of everything will play a crucial role in the sense that every device may have a processing element or an or a microcontroller uh, with along with sensors which can which can identify and communicate with the neighboring devices and make things very lively and then we have discussed uh, what is meant by user mobility and what is device portability the user mobility means in the sense the user moves from one place to another place and the service follows him examples are call forwarding and the and the desktop which is uh, which is similar in home and office all these are examples for user mobility device portability means the device moves from one place to another place uh, but whatever the network available 
in the new place according to that the device will adapt and and it will continue to provide whatever the service it is supposed to provide and then we discussed the characteristics of communication devices so the communication device will fall under any one of these characteristics either it will be fixed or wired either it will be fixed and wired which is a traditional computer uh, which is fixed at one place and it will not be uh, moving at all because of its weight and other factors the second is mobile and wired it means the device is is portable but it is wired so laptop can be treated as an example for that where the device is movable uh, but you may be uh, plugging into some network in office and some other network in home and some other network in uh, if you go to a hotel or somewhere some other i mean for internet connectivity you may be plugging to a different uh, wired network so such a system is called as mobile and wired and then fixed and, and wireless this is mainly used in uh, historical buildings uh, to prevent damage of the building the devices will be placed at some locations and they will communicate through wireless uh, media but the devices will be fixed they will not be mo uh, movable and the final one is mobile and wireless so which is here the device itself is movable and also it communicates uh, without wires so mobile phone is a good example for this and then we have discussed several applications for mobile communications we have discussed the applications under several headings like uh, uh, how mobile communication uh, is used for in vehicles in vehicle in vehicle to vehicle communication like uh, like identifying the traffic identifying the accident or uh, van at and so on and so forth and in emergencies uh, if a patient is uh, uh, being taken to the hospital through a getting if a patient is being carried to a hospital through the ambulance and if the ambulance is supported with a high speed wireless network uh, how it can communicate the patient data to the hospital uh, so that uh, the required expertise can be arranged in the hospital and and we have discussed the applications in business and infotainment and and several other applications also we have discussed and finally we have discussed the history of wireless communication starting from ancient ancient time to uh, till date okay so that's it about session 1 so let us stop here thank you